Hello guys, I uh, hope you're doing well. This video is on my uh, 7K0 Pro update and how I managed to get them overclocked and where, how far did those overclock went. And then also at the end of the video, we'll go quickly about uh, pros and cons about this um, overclocked firmware, right? So uh, to begin with, uh, first of all, I created that spreadsheet uh, you probably have seen it in the other videos. So I'm having these clocks pulled out from my um, from Ice River free Ice River monitor that provided by T Swift, so you can download and use it to check your uh, clocks there, and also uh, check in your uh, hash rates and temperatures and fan speed, all kind of things, all the chips temperatures. So a lot of useful information about your uh, K zeros, Pro K zero, all of the K Ice River. Um, monitoring uh, basically a tool so really useful software check it out if you don't have yet now also it's it's really um, important because when you overclock I, I've noticed that a lot of time you go back and check and your clocks still uh, like old 820 let's say you had 825 which is 300 version right right there uh, so if you have 825 300 version and then you update it to the next one 320 you should you should see here 875 for example my 875 is on my 113 uh, IP address right so if I go there I'll click uh, stop here and read now am I gonna see 875 that's my um, 320 overclocks and then I'll see if it does perform or not and I check on the pool so it, it, for me even more important how it's performing on the pool than just on the web GUI or on this tool uh, hash rate sorry excuse me so that's basically what I'm doing with every each one of them and obviously all of them being updated with the new heat sinks all thermal paste replaced and stuff like that they have them all with the running fans uh, that it's 5800 rpm capable to go to 5800 rpm so and a lot of air fuel i put i put diffusers that uh, sh you know hits the air right inside of the device and stuff like that if you've seen previous video how i did this um, ice river mining box uh, it's maybe not perfect but it actually create enough airflow for me to uh, upgrade these devices with almost not the issue except just the three of them see like this overheats i have in red so those are uh, cannot go higher than the version currently installed so as soon as i switch to the next version it will just over starts overheating on these two version on this version and here and i have separate video coming out about that how i determine how i catch that um, overheating uh, so anyways now um go back to this video i have this old clock set up i know which overclocks i'm running and so i'm checking on the uh, how stable i am and i want to pass 24 hours this is my internal fans just for me just the information here and uh, what the hash rate i'm getting on the pool and that's pretty much gives me idea where i'm at with this overclocks now when i have the silicon lottery is that means there is no issue with heating it just will not run on the higher clocks for me so i have to reduce and go to the stable clock so i don't want to have keep it here on 340 there's no issue with heating i checked all the temps on the mosfets everything fine like below 40 even even cooler than any other uh, devices and it would not perform it would just stay 300 then drops to 290 and stays there so there is no really um performance on that clock so i think it's a silicon lottery for my uh, Previously, I had that these two devices already been an issue for me. On uh, it would not accept 280 version right here. It would not overheat. It would just not take it. It will just perform slower at uh, two maybe 60 on my 280. So I had to drop them to 270 to perform even better. Sometimes it would go to 75 here versus over here it would be 260. Right. So you may have experienced similar issues. Um, let me know down in comments what you're doing. That would be really interesting to see what you've done to do that, uh, to perform, um, to get the better performance on your devices on overclocks. But uh, that's what I'm getting so far. 
Now, as soon as I go here higher, it will accept the higher rate. It will start hashing at 340, but then it overheats. How do I know? I check with thermal image and camera, and I could see this overheating on the camera. So uh, all of these devices that I need to do something. On number one, I still have a uh, uh, idea to change my uh, first heat sinks were really small, six by six by five. That's almost covered by those. Uh, uh, boxes that the uh, chips that behind them and there is no airflow so I'm kind of afraid that's maybe an issue with this device these two actually have the uh, better heat sinks largest heat sinks this is even the larger heat sinks there and they will still overheat so this I think there I need even more airflow through these devices before I can achieve anything better so I'm waiting for two fruition design kits uh, once they come, I'm going to be testing and putting the other video for these guys, two of these guys, see if I can achieve 340 on these two devices. So there is hope there. There is hope here. Now, this one I don't give too much hope because this specific one was actually not performing on 280 version before. So my guess would be like, mm, probably not going to even go on 340, maybe 320. If I'm lucky, if I get 320, I'll still gonna be happy because right now it's overheats here so uh, what's next the pros and cons for me so first of all let's start with what what did I achieve with this overclock so my stack overclocks it's a uh, 200 per device seven of the miners would be a 1400 1.4 tera hash right and I'm getting 2275 giga hash right now uh, and it's not completely even I'm not all the way 100% where I can get I'm probably still can get another 40 or 60 giga hash and I'm already gaining 875 so even starting here where I am uh, let's just calculate uh, do the simple math so I spent $72 right now it's even cheaper but uh, it was 600 caspa uh, at when caspa was around 12 cents I believe so I spent 504 on the uh, upgrades right so it seems like a lot of money everybody like oh it's too expensive well guess what uh not just that i have to put my uh five dollar for the heat sinks five dollar for the uh i believe for the the thermal pads thermal paste uh and then silicone glue then i had uh, another five dollar for connectors so all this formula basically here covering all the a little extra parts and pieces of course i had already psu a server PSU from GPU miners. I have some cables that I need didn't need to buy a lot of stuff, but some of them, uh, some of the stuff I had to buy. So they're all calculated there, right? So it's another $147. So yeah, what total spent for all this overclocking is $651. And I was able to achieve of the at least 4K0 Pro performance of the clocks of the stock speed, right? So. If I get them with the stock, uh, I would spend at least $2,000 at minimum, because even if you order with all these um, discounts, codes, and everything you have, pay customs, it's probably going to be even more uh, than $500 a piece. And that would be uh, $2,000 if I buy four of those to achieve 800 giga hash. So I'm, I'm doing 875. So I'm just kind of rounded up because some of my uh, perform a little better than 200 it was like 210 220 at some point they were doing better on the clocks than uh, spe uh, that was specified so anyways i just round up to four right so i'm already saving 1349 dollars uh, versus buying all this uh, right so yes there is a factor of a, a, a additional so I, if I would buy originals, I would spend 388 watts uh, running those 4K0 Pros, where I'm running extra now 791 watts. That's my uh, 23 watt 7 uh, fans. So this is a little bit flexible because they go. I have this in after mode, which controlled by the obviously by the temperature. So they run faster when my ambient temperature, my temperatures of the a device go hotter this will automatically control so sometimes it go lower when it's cooler obviously when it's hotter it could go up to 160 watts uh, now here extra power i use i think it's almost 90 watt per device it's 187 from 97 
so it's 630 watt extra so total of 791 watts versus 388 watts so guess what that's like a I'm spending two dollars sixty six, two sixty six a day versus uh, one thirty a day I would spend on my uh, KS zero if I would purchase them. So yeah, that's the pro, that's the that's the cons of that thing. So yeah, the extra spending of that part is your electricity. So if you're very high on electricity, let's say if you're paying fifty cents, then it's probably not worth it because you would be spending a year seventeen hundred dollars. Now, if you are on the uh, 25 cents per kilowatt, so you would be spending 870 a year. So you would still gain uh, about $500 even after a year. Uh, you would, you could even buy an extra K0 Pro, you know, for the difference, the price difference, and would still get same hash rate, right? Uh, now, what else? Like, at, if you are 10 cents, uh, I mean, like, it would take uh, to break even three point eight years almost four years before that would be uh, a lot more you would spend more on electricity which guess what in four years it's probably not gonna even matter because right now is what's important is spending money right now so instead of spending all 2000 in this miners you could have spent 650 and then the rest of 13 or let's say a thousand to buy two more you would still have higher hash rate which more important today than spending an extra 2000 right away and not getting the full performance. So uh, what I'm trying to say, yes, there is some uh, negative is you're running your uh, miners hotter. So when summer comes, it will be harder to control all that efficiency. Also, the efficiency is 1.1 giga hash per watt versus stack efficiency, really efficient, 2 giga hash per watt, which is almost the highest efficiency. Even I think it's better than KS0. So we had uh, our efficiency of the KZ, uh, KS0, uh, KS1 is lower, 114. So it's pretty close to KS1 and KS2, you know, like KS3M and obviously KS3 the best efficiency uh, you can get there so um, with that being said basically that's where my um, where I'm getting with that that it's still worth it for me you know even spending this 650 a lot of fun having a lot of fun with that and also getting achieving this higher hash rate you know 800 giga hash for think about it like how many GPUs you need to run that extra uh, giga hash it's not even you know not anymore with gpu obviously so that's that's only with a6 right now so it's still like 800 it's pretty close to getting ks1 right uh, another 130 giga hash and i'll be there so anyways uh, the point of this video is there um there you can achieve that uh, extra hash rate by uh, overclocking properly uh, and not messing up your device if you do it properly you do go step by step and you don't try to kill your device and if you see that there is the hash rate going up and then down don't try to overload your device just use the hardware uh, the clocks where you stable and where you're not gonna overheat if you have ability to check the temperatures uh, check it with I would recommend check with thermal camera it helped me a lot uh, if not if you see the rate goes up and down that's for sure overheating so stop using that clocks until you have a proper airflow maybe a fruition design will help I'm gonna test a fruition design on these two units next uh, they should arrive this week coming week and uh, it'll be fun to see if that achieves uh, achieves you know higher maybe i can get 340 here or 320 340 here that would be awesome i'll get another 60 giga hash or 40 giga hash that would be fun anyways um well thanks for watching uh, this video i hope it's not too long and we'll see you on the next one